Welcome to Taking Your Health Back on ThinkTech Live streaming network series, broadcasting from our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza at the core of downtown Honolulu. I'm your guest host today, Helen Dora Hyden, sitting in for our lovely regular host, Wendy Lowe. Mahalo, Wendy, for allowing me to host your amazing show and share my story on how I took my health back. Safe travels and see you when you get back home. Remember that our talk shows are streamed live on the internet from 12 noon to 5 p.m. every weekday and earlier shows are streamed all night long. All our shows are streamed on Livestream.com. If you want the links to our live streams or previous broadcasts, which are available on YouTube.com, or if you want to subscribe to our programs or get on our mailing list and get our program advisories, go to ThinkTechHawaii.com. If you want to post a question or a comment during one of our shows, please tweet us at ThinkTechHI. We'll try to get to some questions by the end of the show. Today, I'm very lucky. I get to have Dave Fidel, my amazing boss, join me as a co-host on this show. Dave, thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely, Helen. So nice to see you. Thank you, sir. Today, I'm just going to go through a couple slides to show the audience what I went through on my magnificent journey of weight loss and transformation. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, physical health and mental health, which a lot of people don't like talking about, but I love it because it's a one whole body concept. So today we um, just, I am absolutely excited to share this journey because it's magnificent. And Hawaii has been so transformational for me. Thank you so much for including me in the Think Tech family. Absolutely. So on to our pictures. I want to share with you the first picture. It's me at my heaviest weight ever. I was 200 pounds in Alaska before I came to Hawaii. I was sick, I was diabetic, I was walking with a cane, and very struggling. I was sick in my relationships, I was sick in my physical being, and in my spiritual being. Then something amazing happened. The second picture shows you that I moved to Maryland, and this is what I looked like after 55 pounds of weight loss. Mm. I did lots of line dancing, I did lots of drinking water, I uh, gave up fast food and processed foods, walked two miles a day, rain or shine, did not matter, but I loved the transformation. So I came to Hawaii and bought myself a convertible, Third slide will show you that exciting adventure. That's me and my new little convertible in Hawaii. I learned how to shaka with the best of them and had just a wonderful experience here. Came back to school, got my first apartment on my own. My family lives here, my son's active duty. So it was a real good journey for me to come to Hawaii and see if Hawaii really fits me. I am definitely an island girl now, <laughs> definitely. So my other slide, the next slide will uh, show you how I kind of lost this weight. When I got to Hawaii, the first place I sought out was a country western bar named Nashville Waikiki. They had Aloha Tower. They moved. But I go there three nights a week, and I line dance, and I learned how to swing and do two steps and had a blast. Got tossed around like a rag doll. Had just the best time ever. Met the best people ever. Then after Nashville Waikiki, one extra gift was given to me. I got to reconnect with an amazing person in my life. This person I knew when he was active duty, his name's John, and we dated for a brief moment 30 years ago in Fairbanks, Alaska. Wow. Crazy, right? And we reconnected here, and I did not believe for a minute that was the same man, because 30 years, we both changed. I got real sassy, and John just didn't look like the John I knew back then. So it was really fun to reconnect, and I can report to you now that we've been engaged for two years already. <laughs> we love being fiancés. <laughs> I think we're going to be fiancés for life. <laughs> but John's on his journey and getting healthier, and I'm on mine. So the next slide will show you that, you know, even though I was getting healthier in Hawaii, I still had some health issues that I was having. And that's me at Tripler. I think they have my name on a bed over there, I swear. <laughs> because this, this was such a, I have two heart attacks. Uh, when I lived in Alabama years ago, they said, oh, there's nothing wrong. You know, you have a little bit of high cholesterol. They did an angiogram. They found out I had a 95% cholesterol and an 80%. So they sent it to um, heart, put two stints in my heart, and uh, said I had to be on Plavix for a long time. That was a really rough ride. But, you know, you, you can't keep a good girl down, that's for sure. <laughs> but every year I seem to develop something more and more in my health. And until I met Wendy Lowe, I really didn't think about having the control to take myself back. She really taught me a new program. But the next slide I'm going to show you, this happened this September. This one was where I had a heart attack. 
And that's a scary, scary thing to have because it's and you don't know if it's a joke. And once again, I go carting off to Tripler. They all had different opinions. But luckily, I had a neurologist, a PA, that worked with me and taught me to distinguish stroke and bell palsy. She said, put your hand up in the air and click it, like, like you're clicking your finger. She said, if you can do that, that's a fine motor stroke. And that's what you do. And I know that now. I did not know that before. And so I teach everybody that. And she said, bell palsy is very common here. And people are like, do you catch it? How does it come about? And I said, no, it's just the inflammation of your seventh cranial nerve. But it looks so very terrible. It took a couple months for me to get over that and get back on track. So once again in January, I hit the ground running and started back in school, started uh, doing some uh, internship work at the VA. The VA was very nice enough to let me come and intern with them. And I'm just continuing my journey with HPU to finish graduating I'm um, doing nonprofit mentorship and development. Uh, recently, I'm super excited. One more slide I got to show you. This is Wendy uh, on her patio. She tried to get me to drink a kale smoothie. I turned my nose way up. I was like, hey, that's going to be disgusting. It was delicious. I was shocked. But look at that kale plant on her patio. It's huge. She plucked the leaves, put her magic touch in a blender, and next thing I know, I'm drinking a kale smoothie, and it was delicious. I could not believe it. She uses some juice plus powder, and it was just phenomenal. And she taught me a lot about the tower gardens and about uh, just juice plus and what it does for the body and all these great things that she does. And all her friends have been so warm and welcome to her. And they told me about their health issues and how they've overcome them. So I'm a firm believer. You know, we, I just got to follow their example and more. But I'm super excited to be on this quest to get better health as far as body health. And after the break, I want to talk to you a little bit more about mental health, things that people get But physical health, come join me, Jay. Come join me down at National Black and Peace. <laughs> Wendy Lowe, I drug her down there, and now she's a convert. She line dances with the best of them. She brings her friends. We have a very good time. You don't have to drink. It's free. There's lessons Monday and Friday nights from Donna. Uh, all of us will teach you the basics, and then before you know it, you'll pass me up to get line dances all over the place. You don't even have to wear a hat or boots. <laughs> so what do you think about my crazy journey? Wow. Oh. <clears throat> it takes a certain amount of gumption to go through a journey like that. Uh, you've had hard times, but you've always been good cheer. I remember as we talked. You've always been up on things, optimistic about things, and I think that's got to be part of it. And, and the other part is, you know, you have the um, U.S. military behind you, and that, that taught a few things um, about how to deal with problems, and you have the Veterans Administration behind you, and that taught a few things, and provided all kinds of medical care for you. So, you know, it's too bad that you suffer these misfortunes, but at the same time, I'm very impressed that you have recovered to the extent you have. You're looking great. You sound great. You're clear-headed, and and you're you're a really good host. Thank you, Jay, <laughs> so much. I forgot to mention one more thing. Tripler partners up with the VA to provide services, and if you can't get timely appointments, they do out your choice. And so veterans on this list are very lucky to get very timely appointments. Uh, and two years ago. My mom told me when she passed, I developed a I didn't know. I thought I was going to die. If it's colon related, I automatically think I'm going to die, right? Because of my mom's passed. But everybody reminded me I'm not my mother. I get early checks, mm -hmm. and they found it early enough to where they could do surgery. And uh, I was bedridden. I was one over there. And interestingly enough, the minute I could go line dancing, I went and I did this aerial kick, and that landed me in bed for three days. But it was so worth it to get back on that dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> the secret is all in line dancing. <laughs> the secret's all in line dancing. <laughs> but I tell you, it's it's the support that I've gotten on this from all my friends and my family being here and reuniting with y'all. Everything just it's like the perfect storm. It's like the good. You yeah. know, and it, it just really 
everybody, all my friends and neighbors have said that's the best thing you've ever done. Start over. You know, I still don't go to the beach much. I don't like sand, but you know, everything else I can do. Or hike. I don't like <laughs> something like that. <laughs> but we're about to take a break, and I just want to say that uh, we're going to take a short break. I am Helen Dora Hayden. I am your guest host on Taking Your Health Back on Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series. We'll be back in a minute. We'll be talking about mental health. So please stay tuned for more of the story. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show and is streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. We're back. We're live. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, guest host on Taking Your Health Back on ThinkTech Live Streaming Network Series. I am sitting next to the most amazing man I have met, Sai of my son and John Adams, <laughs> Jay Fidel. Jay, thank you again for hosting this event with me. Oh, it's fun to be with you. Thank you for so much. So I want to talk a little bit, before we get into the mental health part, one thing that I've decided to do is start making Tim my mother, <laughs> I know everybody has that reaction. My mother. Mine dancing and, and kimchi. kimchi, you got it? They go hand in hand, you know. Kimchi is a superfood. And according to the people that make it in Korea, the experts, they have a whole litany of reasons why you should eat kimchi. It's amazing superfood. But yeah, I yesterday, as a matter of fact, I went to a veterans business outreach center near uh, UH Manoa and got my LLC. So I am officially now the kimchi queen. <laughs> I'm super excited and we'll be coming to market soon, but I wanna share this with everybody. It's such an amazing food product and I wanna start resourcing local uh, food source and produce it here and just share that love from my mother through me to all of you. I'm gonna produce kimchi queen kimchi. There's, there's money to be made in kimchi, Helen. <laughs> I make four different kinds, and it's really pretty, it's pretty tasty, so I'm pretty excited about that. So let's talk a little bit about mental health. You know, the VA has put out that there's 22 veteran suicides a day. Not a year, a day. That's shocking. Because I utilize the VA services, and I know about all the wonderful mental health services they have here. So I, I don't understand the disconnect that veterans are facing when they they think that they can't utilize a service or they don't or what the issue is. But I want to encourage everybody to utilize any services that helps you because people want to talk about physical health all day long, but when it comes to mental health, everybody should be quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a public misconception out there about uh, when you say, oh, you have got mental health, oh, she's got PTSD or she's got PTSD, mm -hmm. you know, tread lightly, <laughs> no. I want to wear a shirt that says, you're lucky I'm on my meds today, because I swear, if I wasn't half the time, right? No, just kidding. <laughs> but the veteran community gets a bad rap, I feel, sometimes, because of the stigma that the public gets put on. Whenever there's a shooting, they automatically go to Army veteran, Marine veteran. They harp on that PTSD. much more. PTSD. Let's talk a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm wondering the 22 per day, that's really a shocking number. Um, that's a lot of people killing themselves. And is that, is, that, is that PTSD? Is that people who have been in a war theater? Or is that just retirees from many years ago? No. Nope. Or is it all across the board? All across the board. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when, I, when I've worked with veterans uh, that have gone to deployment multiple times, they come back, their family is no longer there, their support system is no longer there. Normally their bank accounts are taken away, right? 
uh, because of whatever uh, wives leave, husbands leave. Because these these poor men and women that serve have multiple dependents, and so unless you have a really strong things crumble and I can speak of this is me on a good day. On a very, very bad day, I can openly say I in my head three days in reality thirteen days. That's that's nuts. That's hard. That's hard. Yeah. When you don't bathe and when and, and I had to rebuild the myself. I had sticky notes, brush teeth, <laughs> shower, eat. I'm diabetic. Eat, eat, eat. <laughs> You know, and take meds. That was really important for me because when I'm non compliant on medication that my VA doctors provide for me, things go downhill really quickly. Mm -hmm. So I have to be honest with my doctor what's going on. I have to take what they give me, right? And then utilize, this, utilize the other services with my health. They have an amazing program for me. Yes. The, uh, the transformational empowerment centers of the world. So when I came here, I was a hot mess day. I was going through another divorce, starting all over again. Uh, physically, I looked great, but emotionally, I was just drained. And I ended up at the 3D2 uh, outpatient clinic at Tripler, and that's VA run. And then I graduated from that and went on to think, uh, tech school and graduated from that. And now I, I have all these resources underneath me. And I look at it like this. I used to touch fire, just me and the fire, right? And now I have a suit of armor on. That's all the training I've gotten. That's all the support I've gotten. And now I can touch that fire because I got a glove on. I got a fire suit. I, I can do that. What What made you depressed? A lot of it started early on childhood stuff. Uh, I never really talked about my childhood to anybody. I didn't talk a lot about anything because my childhood was so crazy and secretive. My parents are now deceased, so I can open up and share. But uh, my mother's screaming, lots of rage, uh, very unhappy. My father was an alcoholic, uh, a lot of bad things that I did not participate in. And I came here and talked. I had a therapist that understood me, that understood the Asian culture, that didn't judge me, and got me to talk. And I started talking about even my military traumas that I experienced that were inappropriate. It's called MSP, military trauma. Never talked about it, ever. And when I run across men and women that have that MSP, I hold their hand and say, I'll sit here. It's hard. You just bury it, or you think it's hard. Yeah. So does talking about it help? Oh, yeah, talk therapy is the best ever. I love and a big proponent of talk therapy, you know, because for me, I don't need another pill. <laughs> I take enough of my physical stuff. I don't, and I've taken well before and had before Prozac and all those, and it just makes me very different. Could you imagine, James, if you said, Helen, how are you? And I answered, fine, I'm just fine. If that was me on those medications. I'd be afraid. <laughs> I know, right? I don't do well on those so I needed something else. And what I found here is that you're an expert of you. That's how they treat you here at this school. You're an expert of you. And if you don't want to take those pills, they'll help you find another mechanism. And mine was talk therapy. And I got into art therapy. I love my art therapy. What kind of art therapy? Any kind. The one rule is no judgment, <laughs> which is great because my mother was an artist. And I could hear her voice in my head. You don't draw right. You don't, I'm better than you. All these things, right? And now I can do whatever. And it's like, oh, look at that. That's pretty. Or that's, that's for me. That's how I feel. And some of it's dark. And that's okay. Because that's what I'm feeling at this point. They even have this great thing that I keep with me in a day planner with different faces and what the emotional names are for those faces. So I can go up to someone and go, ugh. This is what this is what I'm feeling. Like Self-diagnose yeah. yourself in the, yeah. in, the, in the matrix. And so, uh, what about pills? What about medicine? I don't take mental health. No need. Medicine. Not for me because I use talk therapy. So that's that's been the biggest gift the VA's ever given. The, the gift of talk therapy. With whom? Uh, the VA providers. We have. What, uh, what is a provider? Is that a psychologist? I have a, a psychologist. I have a psychiatrist if I need medication. 
And once in a blue moon, I have insomnia and, and sleep deprivation, they might prescribe me something for sleeping when I start getting really too tense or if I have tremendous anxiety. But I don't do like 30 days worth. It's not like that. Anymore. It's like five days worth. Because I don't, I don't, I used to be like from these airplanes that would just, rah, you know, now it's just kind of like, oh, that's an air pocket. Okay, let's get back on track. Self awareness. Self awareness, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and appreciating and understanding your body, your needs, reaching out for help to people you trust and you build relationships with. And then just doing your thing and making yourself happy. What is it for value that makes you happy? I found out recently, you know, I'm happy making kimchi. So I'm going to do kimchi for the well, next while. Well, it's creative, among it's other things. It's very creative. And healthy. And that's how I share love through food. <laughs> so that that's I'm gonna show lots of love on the island. <laughs> well, yeah. So okay, so where where is it going? What's the dynamic on it? In other words, you're better now than you were before. Um, you feel that you have reached uh, you know your optimal mental condition, no. or is there more work to be done? Always more work. Always more. Because the last two years, I focused on certain aspects of my life. I like to go deep. I would like to go a lot deeper into the military aspect. I would like to go deeper into the PTSD aspect, uh, learn better sleep hygiene. Just really, I'm at a place now where I'm safe enough and comfortable enough with my child. And they have wonderful programs. Like here, they send a lot of people to Colorado in California for PTSD intake. Mm -hmm. So, you know, who knows what the future holds, but I'm willing to take that next step and like I said go up to that fire with my fire suit say bring it because it can't hurt me like it did for me. What sort of things do you think you need to avoid you know to uh, you know to, to have a recurrence of the problems you had before? Sure depression is the big one. It's the easiest to fall back into. Anxiety and depression go hand in hand. Once those go everything goes. I think for me is no isolation. I have all my friends Facebook, everybody. If you don't hear from me in three days, if I don't post something, something's wrong. You need to come find me or check on me or something. If I don't show up at Nationals in a week, something's wrong. So I've got these catch little things going with all everybody around me. And like, for instance, if I'm in a public situation and I get anxiety right away, I have people saying that everybody knows. Would you like a cold drink? And they give me a cold drink because coldness surrounds me to be in the mindful moment. And I learned mindfulness is not How just, it's very cool for me. Yeah. What I've learned to, that works for me. Literally cool. Very cool, right? <laughs> and I've also learned that mindfulness isn't just, no. Mindfulness to me is country line dancing. That's why I like it. It's a double win for me. I get to focus. I don't even know who's watching my face because I'm focused on myself. And they have these great mirrors. I get to look at myself. I mean, it's a bonus. <laughs> but I focus on what I'm doing. I take myself away from whatever I'm thinking and just for a couple hours focus on dancing. So it's a, it's a multiple win. Oh, goodness. So all of this is working out fine. Um, do, you, do you foresee going to a provider for the rest of your life? Do you foresee uh, you know, having the same kind of mental clarity experience, you know, whatever you do to become clear the rest of your life? I think I think because my parents created me to fix it, I think I will always for sure. Mm. Because the minute I quit talking, I think it will easily revert back to old habits, old behavior. It, to me, it's 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 ongoing. It's like for me, like putting on makeup. Right? I feel prettier about myself. I I feel more confident. Mental health care for me, talk therapy, it's like that. It's like it just gives me a boost. It reminds me of who I am, what I'm about, mm -hmm. where I want to go. Identity. Yeah. 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 So what about the PTSD part? Did you have an experience in the service that, that led to PTSD? Oh, I had lost. And unfortunately, were you in, were I, you was in not a, a I was theater? not in a Nope, I was not. I'm not a combat vet, which everybody thinks, I, they can't imagine me in the military at all. But uh, I, I'm a 100% disabled vet, and I tell people all the time, I'm a 100 percent for a reason. So on bad days, it's really bad. On good days, it's really bad. There's a very little middle ground. It's all or none with me. But I, I had some experiences 
and will gladly share them with anybody uh, that wants to contact me. They can absolutely contact me uh, at the station, and I'll get back to them and give them some guidance on the resources available to them. But I think uh, one of the things I wanted to share before we ended our show was crisis line. I have reached out to crisis line. I have insomnia. So my brain is a three-act play going all the time. I write things down, and still more things pop up. And I feel like I can't sleep. And instead of picking up a sleeping pill, I'll try to And you don't have to be suicidal. You don't have to be homicidal. But those are the first two things they want to know, just to give you heads up. If you say, I'm not either of these. I'm just in crisis because of this. Then they can work with you. They're always on your side. And the gift is they are 24-7. They, you don't know this person. They don't know you. It's lovely. because. A lot of times, you know, family members, I can't, I don't want to tell my kid everything that, you know, I don't want to worry them or, you know, whatever. And my friends, I don't want to burden, but I can talk to crisis line all day. I can text them if I'm, I can't be at a place where I can pick up the phone, I'll text them and have a text conversation with them. Well, it's interacting yeah. with yeah. another human being who's a fair witness. You Absolutely. Know? And, and people who are too close to you, sometimes they cannot be fair witness. Absolutely. And people that um, have history with you, you know, it's just sometimes wanting. Yeah, you're and with you. With me, right. Yeah. And and so having this crisis line, you just hit the number. We're going to show it up on the screen, but you just hit this number, and it's wonderful. You, you hit one, but anybody, anybody can talk to you. You don't have to be a veteran. Veteran is option one. But if you are a caregiver, if you're a civilian, please, all I really want the message out there is, yes, work on your physical. Yes, absolutely. Work on your relationships, absolutely, because that's the most important thing. Because when we go, it ain't about job, money, or any of that. It's, man, I wish I had spent more time. The relationship is all about relationships. All about relationships. But in the end, work on your mental. You deserve it. You deserve to work on your mental. Don't be afraid. I spent 50 years being afraid of people, and that led to a life of depression and anxiety. It could have all been avoided had I just talked at an early age. So when you walk down the street and you feel a little down, what do you do? I start smiling at people. <laughs> I do because they smile back. I have this crazy it's that trick. interaction. Yeah, it's, I, I like people, right? So I smile and they smile back. So that's pretty much what I do. Good for you, <laughs> Dave, thank you. You've been such a tremendous support. And being on this show has truly helped me build my confidence level up and just and get to meet wonderful people like Wendy Lowe and Cal Griffin and all your other hosts. It's been such a joy being a host on this show. Yeah, that's why I say I'm your ardent admirer. <laughs> <laughs> we got to wrap this up, Jay. Thank you again for being on this show with me. Aloha. Aloha. Okay, we are out of time, and we'll have to wrap it up. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, guest host on Taking Your Health Back on the Think Tech live streaming network series. It's been great pleasure filling in for our favorite Wendy Lowe, and it's been so much fun sharing my journey on how I took my health back. Thank you again, all of you, for being here. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Ray, our floor manager, Cindy, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. If you want to get on our email and social media program advisories, click the link on thinktechhawaii.com. If you'd like to be a guest, underwriter, or volunteer, or if you want to join us in our downtown studio plaza in Pioneer Plaza, contact Jay at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want the links to our live streams or our previous broadcasts on Ustream.tv or YouTube.com, just go to ThinkTechHawaii.com. Go there and to our Facebook page and tell them that you like us. We would love for you to like us. And of course, we'll see you next time. We're taking my health back with our host, Wendy Lowe. Come out to Nashville's Waikiki and Aloha Tower and practice some mindfulness and line dance with me and Wendy. Yes, Wendy line dances. Stay healthy, my friends. Mahalo and aloha.